Hey everyone, Brendan Dunn here, and in this video, I'm gonna share something with you that I think should be standard practice for anyone who has an email list. And it is something that is relatively straightforward to put into place, and once it's up and running, you're gonna get a ongoing kind of fire hose of voice to customer data that's segmented that you can then use to drive really powerful personalization campaigns. So this is something that I've been practicing on my own and my, for, mostly for double year freelancing for the last three, maybe even four years now. And it's really straightforward and simple to get up and running. We're gonna be using off the shelf tools, including the email marketing uh, software you're already using to collect this data. But then we're going to give you, the, give you basically the ability to see why people are joining your list and what they're actually getting from you and how that's aligning with their expectations in a way that's segmented. So you can see, you know, for instance, how are people who are just starting out, how are they, why are they joining your list? What is it they need from you? And are they getting what they need? And you're gonna be able to compare and contrast that to people who maybe are growing a business or looking to sell a business or whatever your different segmentation dimensions might be we're gonna basically end up with a spreadsheet of voice to customer data that is enriched with metadata of the different segments that people belong to. So you're gonna be, have this great, incredible superpower where you can go in and say, show me everyone who is looking to start a business and is in you know, this industry. And then boom, there's everyone. And then you can look and try to piece together common attributes, common things that they need help with so that when you're trying to sell those people in the future, you can focus in on exactly what they're telling you that they need from you. It sounds, I, I, I appreciate, I understand that this probably sounds a little complicated. I'm gonna to try to make this short and sweet. I have a tendency to ramble, but I'm gonna to try to really focus in and give you exactly, exactly what you need. But I know for a fact, if you do this, it'll take about 30, maybe 45 minutes to get up and running. You do this, you set it up once, you will get data that is so incredibly useful that I can almost guarantee you are not getting now. Again, it doesn't take long to get this up and running and it could just be the best use of your time, the best use of at least 30 minutes of your time uh, that that you've, um, yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this, but anyway, it'll be worth, worth your while. All right, so, let me uh, quickly kind of walk you through the overall structure of what I'm gonna be showing you. So first off, we're gonna segment people on arrival. So when they opt into your email list, whether it be through like a newsletter opt-in or something a little bit more intentional, like an email course, what I'm gonna turn you to first, if you haven't read this, is I have an article that I put out on the basically beginner's guide to segmentation. So how do you go about better understanding who your audience is and what it is they need from you? So and if you don't have, if you don't know, if, I, if you can't answer right now, say three or four key reasons why somebody might be joining your email list, then I'd encourage you to read this article. I've linked to it in the description below and go read that, pause this video, go read that and then come back. If you've read that or you already have an understanding of the different needs, let's say, that people on your list have, what we wanna do is we wanna find a way to capture that need data when somebody opts in. So why we wanna do this is we, first off, we wanna kind of set the expe expectation that, hey, I wanna understand who it is you are and what you need help with so I can give you the best possible experience with me. I mean, that's time and time again, kind of the, the killer strategy when it comes to increasing conversions is saying, what is it you need help with? And then here's how I can help you with that. So to do that, two different ways that I'm gonna recommend. The first way, and again, I'm biased, uh, is with Right Message, which is the software company that I um, co-founded. And what you can do here is you can quiz somebody through your standard calls to action where you can say, hey, you know, welcome to my website. What do you need help with? Oh, I need help with starting a business. Cool, they click that. And then uh, you can then show your opt-in form in a way that is very relevant to people who want to start a business. So, hey, I'd love to help you start a business. You know, join my email list and I'll send you great tips or something like that. They opt-in and then that data, that segment data of why they're here will then be sent up to your email marketing app. So then what you can do is in the very first email that you send this person, you can put at the bottom, at the footer of that email, 
something that basically goes, can't wait to help you start your new business. If you don't mind, I'd love to find out a bit more about who you are and what specifically is motivating you to get started and, and, and you know create this new business. But you want to find a good way to basically say to somebody, I want to find out as much as I can about why, why it is you want to start a business so that I can best help you. So click this link. What this will do is it will link somebody to a type form. We're gonna pass along the email address of that new subscriber so that when they go to the type form, all they need to do is just type in, you know, the, the answer to that question. What it, why, why do they wanna start a business? You know, free form text. And what we're gonna have happen is when they submit that form, the data that they've given you will be sent up to a Google Sheet uh, via Zapier which will then append a new row saying, hey, here's somebody who wants to start a business. Here's their email address. Here's what they've, they've said. Then later on, well, let's say at the end of that email course, if you're pushing them through an email course, or maybe you know two weeks in or something like that, you send another email saying, you know, hey, it's been two weeks, or hey, you've completed this email course. Am I giving you what you need? Are you better on track now to start your new business? I'd love, regardless of what your answer is, I'd love to hear from you. So here's another quick form that will help me better understand how am I doing? And again, this links to another type form. Same thing, you're gonna pass along the email address of the person. And if they submit that type form and tell you, oh, you know, I think you're doing great, but I'm still struggling with X, Y, and Z, um, blah, 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 blah. They submit that. And then the uh, spreadsheet record that you have for them will get updated. And now there will be another column which has their like, you know, whatever you want to call it, how am I doing or something like that, their response in that. And what you want to have happen here ultimately is you want to keep these rows in sync with the segment data that you're collecting in your email marketing app. So, so far I've only mentioned, you know, what is your core need? So start a business, grow a business, sell a business, let's say. But maybe you find out later on their industry. Maybe you're using right message to make it so when they're back on your website, you're saying, hey, what, what industry are you looking to start a business in? Oh, I'm looking to start it in uh, you know, a, a bakery or something. Um, or maybe you ask you know, if they are looking to grow a business, how big is your team? Oh, it's just me, or I'm you know, 10 to 20 people, or whatever it might be. You get all that data, you're feeding it now into your email marketing app, which if you've been following what I've, uh, you know, any of my rants for a while, you know that I think your email marketing database should be your single source of truth. So you're enriching that underlying subscriber record with all this data about you know what their need is, industry, team size, and so on. And then whenever that underlying segmentation data gets updated, that gets sent up to that spreadsheet, giving you ultimately the ability to do things like show me everyone who is looking to grow a business and is in you know the bakery space or whatever the bakery industry. Show me everything they've told me, and then you can filter down that spreadsheet to only be here's why I'm here, here's what I need from you, along with here's how you're doing a few weeks in, here's what I'm still struggling with. You can get all this vo this raw voice of customer data that is highly segmented, that you can drill down and, and you know splice and dice however you want it to be, but you can get this raw voice of customer data where I can say ultimately, show me everyone who wants to start a business. Boom. All right. What am I finding? What kind of trends am I seeing in this? Oh, maybe a lot of them are saying this and that, or you know, in the words of Amy Hoy, what what crispy language are these people who all have this struggle of wanting to start a business? How are they describing what it is they're looking for? What they need help with from me? Then likewise, people who want to grow a business or sell a business, what are they saying? And you can use all that data to then start to personalize maybe your onboarding emails, maybe sales pages, whatever it might be in a way that reflects what people like them have said. So if a lot of people who are looking to start a business, start a bakery business, if they're all saying the same thing and they have the same you know, specific problems and they're telling you that even after you know this much time with you, they're still struggling in this way, well, let's say you wanna go pitch them on your um, you know, build a great business course or something like that, you can then really dial in for those people on, hey, here's why this course is going to help you start an incredible bakery business. Boom. You know, makes it completely relevant to them. It, it really niches down 
the thing you're trying to get them to do next, like buy a course or hire you or whatever it is you want them to do in a way that's specific to what they've told you. And the way to get that raw voice to customer data is through an ongoing and automated data collection method like the one I just described. If you follow people like Joanna Weeb, she talks about how the best sales copy is not created, it's not dreamt up of in a vacuum, it's curated. And that's what we're doing here is we're giving you the ability to have these two different touch points, one of which is when they just show up, just giving you their email, they're super excited, they wanna see how you can help them, and the other is a little further down the line. You're able to get this raw voice to customer data and then repurpose it in your sales messaging, on your product description, you know, your sales pages and all these different things. So to do this, really simple. I've already given you a high level overview and shown you a few of the things you want to do so far uh, to get a lot of this in place. But basically what you're doing is you're putting into your email autoresponders, you're linking people to Typeform and ideally you're passing along the email address of that person so they don't need to key it in again, which can mean you know, they type in a different email address or whatever else. You can also use Gravity Forms, you can use whatever form tool you want that allows you to pass in hidden variables. So you wanna get that into Typeform and then you wanna use software like Zapier to say, hey, when this Typeform form gets submitted, I wanna then go and create a new row in a Google spreadsheet that I have with the email address, any segmentation data that I have, and the raw response that they told me and then likewise, later on, if they submit that second form, find that existing row, update it, and now you've got you know one row per unique person on your email list who has done this with that, why am I here and, and how am I being helped so far, raw data in it. So highly recommend doing this. Again, it shouldn't take that long. You can, if you wanna stay simple, don't need to be doing all this type form stuff. You could simply start with just having people reply to your emails um, and then, you know, let's say I reply to your email and uh, I say, you know, hey, Brennan, I, uh, I'm struggling to start a business because I don't think I'm good enough. I think it'll fail. I've got a really good job right now. Whatever my, my reasoning might be, you then go into my record in your email marketing software and say, all right, look him up. Okay, Brennan. Oh, he marked himself when he, uh, you know, joined my list is wanting to start a business. So I can go into a spreadsheet, but start a business my email address, and then paste in my response. And then likewise, if I respond later on to you, you update that row, paste in that response. Uh, but the the Typeform Zapier way is just a more automated way of achieving that same end. So let me know what you think. If, if this is something that you think makes sense, is something you would probably implement, uh, let me know in the comments below. I can tell you with certainty that the biggest struggle that people have when it comes to getting into personalization, very few people need to be convinced that generally speaking, personalized, high, you know, highly relevant messaging is superior to generic messaging. Very few people need to be sold on that. But people struggle with, well, what do I say differently to people in this segment versus that segment? And this is an exercise you can do that will give you that raw data, that voice of customer data that they, you can then use to start creating your first personalization campaigns. So again, I hope this helps. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I'm gonna, you know, now that I'm back from a little short summer break, planning on creating a lot more of these. And um, I'd love to, again, hear what you think in the comments.